In Britain today, we're all after a bargain. I'm sorry, I think that is appallingly bad value for money. Over half of us now shop in discount stores. Bargain, £99, Xbox and two games. We're cashing in coupons, buying in bulk and scouring for savings. Then we give it to the mother-in-law. She has a couple of rolls. We'll stuff our freezers if the price is right. We have 62 pizzas in the freezer. Yes, Whatever our bank balance, we've all gone bargain bonkers. 23 quid for a panda, that's a bargain. Can I bring him back if he's aggressive? But when we won't pay full price, how do shops survive? Is there any chance I can get a few pounds knocked off it today, please? We go behind the scenes of four big businesses delivering the deals we're demanding. Customer still learned at least after the shoe. And it's not easy. Everything's on the floor. I think it's just because it's a bargain, they just don't care. Trace, I think you're going to have to give me a hand with this. We see the challenges they face keeping prices low. This is the maddest thing I have ever done. And sales high. You can't let it get you. If you let it get you, you'll, you'll lose your hair. This is the story of Bargain Fever Britain. In Sheffield, this warehouse is the home of online bargain shop Approved Food. Good, good, good. Everything flowing through. It's the brainchild of Dan Cluderay. Turnover now, last year, was just over £4 million. Dan sells food and household products over the internet at bargain basement prices. So it says on here £1.79, so we'll sell something like this at uh, two for a pound. Good purchase. Well done. Yeah. 14 years ago, Dan's business was just a market stall. But he stumbled on something that's really given him an unusual edge. A lot of his food is out of date. Who wants to be known as the supermarket selling things that are out of date? Well, I do. I've actually got some honey at home that's older than my youngest child of five. This went out of date at the end of last year. The question is, is this OK to eat? Oh, dear me. Look at that. It's lovely. Paul, can you get rid of that for us? It's just a going bin. In fact, leave it on my desk. I'll have it when I go home. It's nice, though. Dan's selling, but who's buying? In Wales, mum of two, Esther, is a regular customer. I'm really thrifty, and believe it or not, uh, my weekly food budget for the four of us is £50. It's exciting times as my delivery has arrived. Now, this was my bargain of the century, because I had these for five pence. The husband really likes pot noodles. Got some crisps. So I've got to try and find room <laughs> for all this stuff now. If it really came to crunch time, I have stored some stuff in the car before, but that's not the best. The total that I paid for the two boxes is £49.36. The amount it would have cost if I had paid full price would have been £186.28. So I actually saved £144.42, which is incredible, really, isn't it? Thanks to Dan, Esther is now an out-of-date devotee. This spicy sauce, well over six months now, after it's best before date. So, I just have a mouthful now. Mmm, really nice. Got a bit of a kick to it. <laughs> I do feed my young family with all the stuff that I get. No problems at all, no illness or anything. Dan's created a successful business out of the difference between best before and use-by dates. A use-by date is there for health and safety reasons. Use-by dates you'll find on meats, fish, things that you'll normally find in your fridge and freezer. You'll find best before dates on things in your cupboard, pasta, crisps, tins of soup, things like that. It's got nothing to do with the safety of the actual product. It's whether that pop is going to be as fizzy. Sounds all right to me. Dan's doing well in Bargain Fever Britain. He currently ships to around 600 homes a day. That's over 150,000 deliveries a year. 
What we've got is pickers who are basically getting the orders that people have put online. As long as I'm busy, I'm up. Business is booming. The team is getting bigger. But that means the warehouse is bursting at the seams. It's basically about how many people can you get in one space before they start banging into each other. And we've hit that limit. In a couple of weeks' time, Dan's got to move to a bigger warehouse. It's three times larger and three times as expensive. Dan's taking a massive gamble on the business continuing to grow. Obviously, there's a great deal of risk in there of where it goes wrong, but this is the sort of path that we steer. In bargain fever Britain, people like Dan are competing with global giants, like American wholesaler Costco, who had a turnover of over $100 billion in 2013. I think Morrison's a, a £10 at the moment, so we have to beat that price, yeah. Mark Dowling has been the manager of the Cardiff branch for seven years and still gets excited by some of the things they sell. Yeah, they're good-sized fruit, those. This is an item that really does well for us. This is uh, Storytelling Doll's House. These items uh, come with it. There's a flushing toilet in there, for example. Mark doesn't just work here, he's one of the shop's best customers. We love this item, this is our own shirt. So I've got one and a half wardrobes full of these things, long sleeve and short sleeve. I'm not quite sure you need to iron them. <laughs> I must ask the wife. <laughs> Mark's store is just one of 26 locations around the country and they're doing a roaring trade. So much so, they've got plans to open two more in 2015. It's a very exciting time at the moment, because basically we can't keep up with demand at the moment. It's just phenomenal. Amazing, considering you have to pay to shop here. Here we go. One, two, three. That's lovely. That's £30 cash. And there's your card. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you pay a membership fee, every single item has got to be cheaper than anybody else in the whole country. Has to be. Costco is basically a cash and carry selling goods to traders and business owners at wholesale prices. Quinoa. Yeah, red quinoa. I bet they had it here. Did they? Yeah. Restaurant owners Mike and Sandy are stocking up on some catering essentials. I'm looking for quinoa or quinoa. Here we're getting double cream. Compared to having it delivered straight away, you've saved 20, 24 pounds. I'll go and have a look at the wine. So it's not a wine you'd be drinking tonight? Well, there's only four left, so I'm yeah. wondering if uh, I should get the last four. We might as well get the last four, then. Personally, I like a wine that I can drink today. Sometimes, you just see things, you've got to buy them. You've got to speculate to accumulate. But savvy shoppers can also become members, and many of Mark's customers are ordinary people looking to get a bargain by buying in bulk. Having a larger family, we tend to go through quite a lot, and it does save a lot of money. They promised us it'd be 30% cheaper here than anywhere else, and um, it's true what they said. I'm happy now with my 40 cans of spaghetti. The nuts are the largest peanuts you've ever had. Once you start, you cannot stop. They're dangerous. It's economical, really. Just need a pocket full of money to buy it. <laughs> Mark's members come in for bulk deals and often end up buying a bit more than they bargained for. All the customers that walk around Costco's, all they say is, I always spend too much because you want to. Look at my giant marshmallows. We come in here just for food and things and see these. There's no way you walk past them not buying one. Might come back for more, yeah. <laughs> Filler steaks I love and then snow sledges and then I've got some thermal snowwear for when we go skiing. Our members want value, whether it's everyday items or the luxuries in life, even the millionaires in the world, like a bargain. Mark's warehouse contains all manner of things to tempt shoppers, from hot dogs to hot tubs. They'll even bake you a cake to order. Yeah, what's mad is I can be down here in the bakery icing a cake, and then at the other end of the store, you've got someone selling a car and changing tyres. I got a cake for demo. Mark's special deals are constantly changing, and today he's got something he hopes will be the next big thing. This is very unique to Costco. It's a global item. 
It's just a phenomenal sized bear. But shifting the eight foot furry giants might not be a picnic. Way too big, too dear. You need to have a second mortgage and buy a bigger house. <laughs> All over Britain, we're mad about bargains. I've got about 12 of these, all completely free. From cars to caviar, we insist on cheap prices for everything we buy. Radios, stereos, you name it, I'm trying to get it. But making money on tiny margins can be tricky. Your profit is gone in minutes. To survive, many businesses stack them high and sell them cheap. High Street footwear chain Shoe Zone does this on a massive scale. I'll be out in a minute, silk container. They sell over 20 million pairs of shoes in the UK each year. Jane's the manager of the store in Bradford. This is my living room. <laughs> Everything's got to be just so. We give our customers such good value because we mass buy. We don't buy a few hundred, we buy a few thousand pairs and divide them between all our shops. You want to try them on? They're not for me, they're for me. Oh, right, that's yeah. fine, love. I come in to this store at least once a month because kids nowadays go through shoes quite a bit. <laughs> you go to a normal shop for work boots and stuff that cost a fortune, you come here and you pay like half the price or sometimes even a quarter of the price. So... <laughs> Thank you very much, see you later. We Brits spend almost £9 billion on shoes a year. Jane's shop alone sells around 1,400 pairs a week, which keeps them busy. We call it titivating, we like to do. So we shove it in and it looks so much nicer. She's very strict about the shop being tidy. Do you know, it makes such a difference to the whole display. Customers serve themselves, which keeps staff costs to a minimum. It is a self-serving company, so they're not coming up to us, and we're not running the back, and where it's, they can just pick it up, try it on. Yes, I want that. It's done. No messing about. No messing about. I like that. <laughs> but there's a downside. Six. If you walk into Primark, cheap, bargain, it's on floor. Cheap, bargain, it's on floor. Poundland, Poundworld, any bargain place, everything's on the floor. I think it's just because it's a bargain, they just don't care, just bang it on floor. You do see customers that kick them underneath the units and the gondolas, because uh, they don't want to put them back. Thank you. Penny in your receipt, that's OK, you're welcome. All in there, five. Thank you. See you later. Jane's Bradford shop is just one of around 550 shoe zones in the UK. Keeping them supplied with the latest lines is this massive hub in Leicester. I'm going to try and put them on next. We'll get more on like that. Here, dispatch team leader Nigel has got to get up to half a million pairs of shoes out to shop managers like Jane every week. And every second counts. Time, time, time is your enemy. The clock's ticking. If Nigel can't fit all the shoes on this lorry, he'll have to order another truck, which will cost money. But it's September, and the new season styles are a problem. Earlier on in the summer, you've probably got sandals 25, 30 pair in a box. Now you're loading boots with sometimes eight pair in a box. They're the size of a small house. At the moment, we're trying to put 7,214 pair on the truck. We've maybe got 40 cartons left to go on. Man, it's going to be really close. Bom, 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 bom. Just be aware that Gaz has got to get in the truck. That. Take that out, in. Yeah. Put these bigger ones there. I tell you what, we'll go with the bigger one in the corner. <laughs> OK, that's it. Beautiful. Jobs are good in, isn't it? To get that many cartons on a truck that size, excellent. Great spatial awareness. Nigel's big push has paid off, and Jane's new boots are finally on their way. Value stores help lots of us save cash, but some of us are getting special discounts using promotions like coupons. In Norfolk, mother of two Holly is coupon crazy. These Listerine bottles are priced up at £2.49. Got these completely free with a coupon. These air fresheners, 
got them for 50p each. Um, I tend to put like um, things like this as stocking fillers uh, for Christmas. This um, Royal Cane cat food priced up at £4.30 but I got this completely free with a coupon I found on the internet. Um, quite a lot of people were getting about 12 bags of these but I haven't got a cat so I just got it to um, donate to Cat Shelter. The last two years I must have saved over £2,500 by couponing alone. I'm just obsessed with it. Couponing is addictive. We've got four coupons for yeah. £1.50 off each pizza. Right. So it's going to make each pizza 50p each, which yeah. is so much cheaper than 2 pounds We're going to get more coupons because you get a coupon when you buy the box. So make sure they have the promotional yeah. offer on them. Mozzarella don't. I have two coupons for £2 off each product, which will make these completely free. You can get coupons for absolutely everything, and I know that. <laughs> well, with the money I save on couponing, we are able to treat ourselves, so we're gonna get ourselves some donuts. Oh, trash in the store, Molly. You gonna put these on the trolley then? Good girl. Holly, can I get one? No, I'm trying to save money, not waste it. What my personal view is with couponing, the sky's the limit. Don't dream. By saving money, you can get holidays Everything. or the reaction of people on the checkout. So the people behind you not happy because they're like, oh, <laughs> it's a couponer, loads of coupons. They start scanning them and they see the total go down. They're like, wow, you've just saved 50 pounds on your shop. I'm like, job done. <laughs> okay, so there is your receipt and you've got some more coupons to spend on your next shop, no doubt next week. So your new total is 46 .96. You've saved about 30% today. Yay, thank you. <laughs> so we saved um, about £24. So sometimes we save more, sometimes we save less, but we always save. So that's the main thing. Slow down, there's cars. OK, so I'm now putting away my restaurante pizzas I bought. And if you look in my freezer, you can see um, I have been stockpiling them. We have pretty much, I think, last time I counted, 62 pizzas in the freezer. We get all my family coming around saying, can we have a pizza? And the neighbours. Yeah, everybody come around here for pizza. From pizzas to petrol heads, it's all about volume. And over in Newport, South Wales, these car salesmen are under pressure. Morning, boys. Morning. How are we doing? We need to be on our games today, boys, yeah? We've got lots and lots of people coming through. They work in a car supermarket which sells new and nearly new vehicles at discounted prices. Very, very nice. It's clutch to start engine. Here you can buy a Citroen hatchback with less than 14,000 miles on the clock for 13 grand. That's over £11,000 cheaper than a brand new one. Russell is the general manager. We, we do a few new cars, but the majority are new to nearly new, so sort of up to 18 months old, no more than 15,000 miles. There's no point buying new when you can buy a six-month-old car at half price. To keep prices low and still make a profit, this branch aims to sell around 500 cars a month. That's 30 vehicles per salesman, an ambitious target. We are a volume business. There's no hiding the fact that we need to sell a lot of cars. That is the secret of us managing to sell them cheaper. Meet and greet's critical. We need to be there to assist and help wherever we can. Today, it's Saturday, one of the busiest days of the week. Weekends are a prime chance for staff to meet targets and top the sales leaderboard. I'm definitely the best salesman. I'll well, ask anyone. The stats don't lie. I'll look at the board. The stats don't lie. I am the best. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Most of the sales staff are from the Valleys. They're known as the Valley Boys, and Julian is one of them. Valleys boys have had a, had a good couple of months. There's a fierce competition with the city slickers, three staff from local towns. I'm not going to lie to you. When the Valleys beat us, it is devastating. There are three of us. It's symbolic of a tripod. So if one leg falls out, we all go, you know. That tripod came out of nowhere then. The targets and leaderboard keep the boys hungry for sales, but Russ also makes sure they stay on the ball. I'll have a wander around. There's people at the top there. Just see if they need any help, yeah? OK. What are we doing, bet? We're not on the betting sites, are we? Come on then, Ross. Enough break time. 
Oh, he, he doesn't have to say too much, to be honest. It's just the the look, the look and the, the threat. Look busy. Off the Here door. comes the boss. <laughs> <laughs> As customers start to inspect the 600 cars on the forecourt, the sales team gets stuck in. How are you getting on, guys? You all right? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah? Yeah. What do you reckon? What do you think of it? Really, really keen. The motor trade is big business. In 2013, over 6 million used cars were bought in the UK, and around 36,000 of them were sold across the Motor Point branches. Everybody's got to be on their game, so we've got to maximise everybody that comes through and make sure they all have the... Everybody has the motor point, full motor point experience. Have a look at that, I'm not going to ask you, right? Yeah. With a no-haggle price policy, the sales team have to close deals on customer service alone. Hiya. Nice to see you, what are you doing? Hi. All the people here have got one common goal, and that's to make sure our customers leave happy. Show you some bits and pieces of the car, yeah? Press the clutch to start it up, yeah? But I'll leave you five minutes, so have a good look at the car, and then I'll uh, come and have a chat with you. That's then. brilliant, okay? thank you. Right. I don't think anyone can be a car salesman. You've got to have a bit of bulk, you've got to have a bit of, bit of personality, otherwise no one will buy off you, do you know what I mean? You can be a bit robotic and mundane, you're going to get nowhere. It's near the end of the day, and with just one sale agreed, Julian is keen to seal another deal. He's talking to a couple who may be interested in a Hyundai hatchback that's on sale for £12,500. Just off on the test drive. We've just gone on our way. Let's go. Taking a car for a spin is a crucial part of the deal, as the team know all too well. Test drives everything. Uh, I do loads of them. The customer only, only really gets a feel for a car when he's driving it, and this is where you can fall in love with it or absolutely hate it. How does it feel? It's very good. Yeah? Very easy drive. Very it is. Easy drive. They're very nice cars, though. I, was in to get to come I know. Customer Diana is still on the fence, so it'll all be down to her husband's test drive. Years ago, you know, we all thought, right, particularly in the eighties, I fancy that, I'll have it. Now we're going, well, do I really need it? Shall I think about it? But anything can happen with Michael. Right, Check out the boxes. I think it's perfect for you. Lovely, I've got it then, have I? Have yep. I got it? Yep. Oh super. So we got a deal? Yep, we have. Okie dokie. Thank you. Not a bad day. Two deals, but generally a good day, yeah. The standard for salesmen is set high. Kyle has been here for nearly six months. He's reaching the end of his probation period and hopes to be taken on full time. This is Carl, one of our uh, newer team members. Hi, Carl. Yeah, good job. Come on then, Carl, let's have a look at this car then. Yep. So you can clearly see, yeah, the roof will come off. Kyle has developed good customer service skills in other jobs, but he's new to the motor industry. I've never, never sold cars before. It's definitely a learning curve, big, big shock to me. And the, the pace in here is, is crazy to us. It's, they sell so many cars, it, it's unreal. What, what are you doing now? You're slacking off now, yeah? He needs to push hard this month to ensure that he hits his targets and to become a fully-fledged um, team member along with everybody else. I haven't hit the target at all yet. I've, been, I've skimmed it. Do we come really close? I've had some extra training, so that's helped me out a lot, to be fair. It'd be nice to uh, get took on on. If he's to hit the target of over 30 deals in a month, Kyle will need to do four deals in the next few days. No easy feat for a rookie. At the upmarket wholesalers in Cardiff, manager Mark is inspecting his stock. Chickens go in more, yep. but we are selling the puckings. Yeah. The store regularly gets new lines in to prompt impulse buys. They have just stocked their shelves with bears that are eight foot tall. I like to put his little hand up here. There you go. It's so soft. It's beautiful. This one's my mate. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh yeah. Mark got 12 of these furry friends last week and they've created a frenzy of excitement. You'd be surprised how many people are doing selfies with this in the background. It's phenomenal. It's just a fun item for Costco. They're massive. I want one. <laughs> the first seven were snapped up, but despite their huge popularity, Mark is struggling to shift the last five. It's a great wow item, but it's a considered purchase. It's huge. 
it's not easily manoeuvrable. I think my daughter would have to come down with her big people carrier and they'd get it in, but they wouldn't get the chewing in, I don't think. Costco has 26 branches across the country with similar stock. In Surrey, manager Steve has two of the Grizzlies left. They've been here for a number of days without us making a sale. It's not an impulse purchase. I think it's just a bit too big. The panda bears at the beginning of the store were much better size, so yeah. Costco is always taking a punt on what will sell, and the pandas are flying off the shelves. They've got small queues, so you can see just along there. Gent be gentle with him. <laughs> it's 23 quid for a panda, that's a bargain. <laughs> can I bring him back if he's aggressive? Yeah, yeah. Bosh, come on, panda. I got a big, big panda. I love that big panda. I don't know why. <laughs> the pandas have gone very, very well. Over, over certainly my expectation. I think with a bear, the size of it, 93 inches, not everybody's going to be able to fit that into their household. But you look at the size of the panda, it's easier for the member to be able to get it home. We sold 360 of the pandas, and we sold just shy of 16 of the 93 inch bears. In a store where everything must sell, the grizzlies need to be snapped up soon. Up in Sheffield, Dan's 50 staff are busy picking orders for his online empire. Taking it from here. Dan doesn't just sell out-of-date goods. He buys a range of stock that other shops reject. These are actually in date, but we'll get something like that because it's been a branding change. Head life repellent. It's hard to believe we can actually sell this because if I had nits, the last thing I'd do is go online to get a shampoo to sort it out and just go to the chemist. But, you know, we sell them. Dan's right-hand man is 23-year-old Perry. Perry. He is the chief taster and posts all their products online. I mean, there's a milkshake there. You'd want to check that, see if there's any lumps in it. No lumps. Not into vanilla, but it's all right. We get some really, really weird, weird stuff. Baklava, it was like a Turkish delicacy, and it was disgusting. It was fine, <laughs> but it was disgusting. With the warehouse move costing Dan and Perry in lost trade, now is the time for a buying trip to ramp up sales and profits. They're at a clearance wholesalers who save Dan some goods the supermarkets don't want. Yep, price mark 55 pence. Dan hasn't come with a shopping list today. It'll all depend on the deals he's offered. I can charge you six and a half p a bag. So on them all, don't we? We'll have them all. Yeah, we'll, we'll sort that First deal done. The secret to um, selling is buying at the right price. Get ready for it, Perry, it's coming. One pound 50. We're offered hundreds of products every single day. So, Opie's sliced lemons in lemon juice. It's really expensive stuff. Probably retail, easy 2 99 3 99 They'll last forever. They went out of date two weeks ago. That is yours, Dan, for 25 pounds. Wow. 100%, we'll have a lot. Slice of lemon in cocktail or something like that. I know what to do with a lemon, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Dan's also snapping up deals on washing powder. That box is only costing you £1.25. And jam from Germany. Germans? Yeah. Do they know about strawberries? Dan spends £6,000 on stock with an original retail price of £15,000. Today's haul should make him a profit of around £2,000 when he sells it on at discount to customers. There's absolutely nothing better than buying it and knowing that it's going to work. Knowing that you've got that great deal. Right. Wow. right. Cheers. Cheers Let's have we meet again. Yeah. And we'll see you soon. Meanwhile in Bradford, Jane and her staff are eagerly awaiting the next delivery of shoes. We're going to get them out as soon as it arrives and make the shop filled again. Right on cue, the lorry arrives. Right, lovely, thank you very much. 124, that's not bad. The team gets to work unloading the heavy boxes. Who needs a gym when you've got shoes on? <laughs> Soon as the new lines come, they're out straight away. This is what can make our money. Let's have a look. 
biker boot. That should be quite popular. Keeping customers coming back for the latest looks is key to selling millions of pairs of shoes. It's kind of like you, you buy it, and but then you can also throw it away afterwards. It's not something that you, are, you know that you've got to keep. It's like an affordable fashion. I believe this will be our best seller in the next few weeks, especially with the party season coming up. Wakes do's, I tell ya. I might be even treating myself to some. And I'm out here waiting for our customers to come in. <laughs> we shall see. A few hours later, Jane is worried. The new boot hasn't sold as yet. I'll keep monitoring them. They need to be out a little bit longer. We're quieting down this afternoon a bit. I'm twiddling my thumbs a bit here now because we were all ready for this busy day. So we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed it gets a bit busier. Even a multi-million pound business like Shoe Zone sometimes needs a bit of luck. It starts to rain, and the customers finally start pouring in. 12 99 please. Boots on, on a day yeah. like this. Boots Need them. Yeah. Suddenly gone really horrible. I need to keep warm and not have wet and soggy feet. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. They feel really comfortable, comfortable and they suit me. They are right for you. Yeah, they're fine. I'm happy now. It is a lot busy now. Oh, I love it. I'm in my element when we've got a queue and that money's going on in that till. Boat tills now. <laughs> That's great. We call it happy hour. <laughs> Bye. After a long day, the staff relax and try on some of the new lines themselves. You know, I can walk in them as well, actually. <laughs> quite a nice fit. You know, quite... <laughs> <laughs> Can we go home now? That's just too much to take. I've generated 250 bits of paper, which perhaps isn't the most eco-friendly thing I've done lately, but it is the plan that's, that's going to get us out the door. Meanwhile in Sheffield, it's moving day at Dan's out-of-date food business. Right, lads. It's the plan we've all been waiting for. I think from this point now, it's just a case of downing tools, cracking on, and off we go. Come on then, let's get cracking. Dan must shift approved food to a new warehouse that's three times as big. We've got people who are operating forklift trucks, there's people who are wrapping pallets, loading wagons, whole teams of people doing different things today. Every minute spent moving is a minute spent not trading. What do we pay for this stuff then? Until the warehouse is up and running, Dan is losing money. They have just 48 hours to move three million items of stock. It's a real nervous time. It's potentially something that could kill us. I'll definitely be getting stressed. There's, no, there, there's absolutely no way of avoiding that. Oh, fella, shipping station. You know, are we going to complete tomorrow or not? We'll see. In Newport, the sales team at Car Supermarket Motorpoint are revving their engines. There is only one week left to hit their monthly target of around 500 cars between them. All right, last weekend of the month, yeah, we've got a big run in for next week. We need to be on our games today, boys. We've got more cars than we've had for years. It's important that they're G'd up for the day ahead. It's a Saturday morning. You need waking up, yeah? Some of you need a wash as well, so go! <laughs> oh, liar! Both disqualified, no prizes. Have a good day, lads. Come on. Well done. Come on. The team is ready for action, but something is missing. Saturday is definitely a big day, but especially the last weekend of the month. Mm. But uh, the footfall is a little bit quiet. Because if you haven't got the footfall in, you can't sell cars. Like, so we need customers to come in. And there's one person who would like customers more than most. 
Kyle needs to reach this month's target of over 30 cars if he's to come off probation and get a full-time position. Five deals for the week. How many are you going to finish on? I'm going to have another four today. Four? Yeah. Two today, two tomorrow. That's right, yeah, yeah. By midday, customers start to flood in. Going into some Molson figures over here. Yeah. Yeah. Sales floor's really, really busy, so that's good. How are you doing, both sides? You run the soles through yet? Nearly. Nearly. Michael has been on the phone with a potential buyer. Yeah, I've got a customer coming down. Basically, they've written their car off um, this week. Nightmare. Um, need a car desperately. They're looking for a new car, and uh, we need quite a big vehicle because my daughter plays door bass. It's very fragile. It's about 100 years old, and I um, don't know what I'd do if they like, fit it in a cheap car and broke. <laughs> Hi, Sean, how are you? Yeah, good, yeah. Thanks for coming. Good. Hi, how are you? Yeah. What's your name again? Florence. Florence yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is quite a big actually, isn't it? Yeah. Massive. Like do, you wanna, do you want to try it in the car? Yeah. Yeah? Right, I want to bring it over there. Okay. See if it fits in the moment of truth. Yeah. Because we've got this musical family with massive instruments. <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't you just play guitar? There you go. Oh, there we go. We'll buy it now. So I think that, how amazing is that? Big family, big instruments. Here's the important bit, will it shut? There we go. Oh, wow. Unbelievable okay. result, yeah. The boot shuts, but can Michael close a deal with customer Sean and his daughter Florence? It's a nice car, but we can always borrow Nana's at the moment, because Nan's broken her leg, so we can use her car for a month. There's insurance and everything. Yeah, no. Well, I hope I've helped you out a bit yeah, with the, the experience. Okay, great. It's a pleasure. Good. Florence, Thank you. there you are. Michael's customers are going home to mull it over. You've got to give people time. They're obviously here for a reason. They want, they want a car. we just got to guide people on the right way and make sure they've had the best experience that we can offer them. Trainee salesman Kyle is hoping for more luck. Oh, yes, he is. He needs to have made four sales this weekend to hit target and win himself a full-time job. OK, if you want, you can start it up. I've worked really hard this month for so um, coming a couple of my days off just to make sure, obviously, I, I do hit it. So I'm going to try and smash where I needed to be tomorrow, you. So. This was a making or break in. Just be with me, I'm going to get a key. Yeah. At the Worldwide Wholesalers in Surrey, manager Steve has some customers interested in one of his giant grizzlies. Yeah, I'm listening to me, it's quite, quite tactile. It it's is. quite a, yeah, a cuddling bear. We're about to buy the bear for our daughter's 22nd birthday. I just want the legs hanging over there and the head yeah. here. She said it can replace her boyfriend because it said it can go on his side of the bed. <laughs> but we came in Billy's van because it wouldn't fit in my smart car. Down to our last two. Um, and we've just sold one, which is absolutely amazing. He's big, isn't he? <laughs> In Cardiff, all of Mark's giant teddies have now been sold. Uh, we got 12 in this particular warehouse, uh, sorted off selling really well. We ended up with five left, and then all of a sudden, those five disappeared over a weekend. The success of the giant bears proves Costco's basic business model. There is a market for anything if the price is right. Regular customer Mark even bought two. Well, I have got a bit of a fetish of bears. This is what I call a bear. Look at it, look at the size of this. You know, look at, look at the size of me to the bear. I mean, come on, Bonzo, you need to go upstairs. Trace, I think you're gonna have to give me a hand with this. Oh my God. <laughs> Get over. <laughs> oh my God. Come on, Thumper. <laughs> oh God. Right, come on. Right. There you go. Oh, diet view. Over in Sheffield, Dan is moving his out of date food business to new premises, three times larger than its previous home. 60,000 square foot, um, an enormous yard, an enormous car park, um, enormous rates, and enormous rent. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's business runs on tight margins. Top pallets A and B, yeah? A new warehouse could ruin him if he doesn't get the shop online and the money coming in. And Dan will need to increase sales by 20% a year to pay for it. You can put all that pallet there. Yeah. 
just, just put that pallet there and it's done. But there's a problem. The computer system that organises the stock has hit a glitch and no one knows where the products fit in the new warehouse. Where they come from? What bay? All this stuff has got, it's basically got nowhere to go. So now we've got to find base for it. I don't know what's on his plans. I don't know, I don't know how it's all working, so. Dan's plan, well, it's, it's as mad as Dan is, really. 11A1. 11A1. Maybe. Uh, it might be. I don't know, in fact. The first thing we scanned, we got like a problem with. It, this is a make or break situation. It's absolutely crucial that, that we get orders out. We're currently looking for Vindaloo curry paste. So if you see it on your way around, <laughs> give us a shout because we can't find it. It takes a tension-filled six hours for Dan to debug the system. I think I, th I think I know what those zeros are. I think it's my cock up, right? With the software running, orders can finally start going out. Finally getting somewhere, getting something out the door. Just do that gentle. Look at that, they're moving down by themselves. Orders. <laughs> Drifting down the roller track. It feels good, doesn't it? It was like a steamboat just passing by and I'm on a gentle beach. It was lovely to see it go past. We've done it, we're in, everything's here. The old site's completely cleared and we've started moving products out and orders out, so. In Newport's car supermarket, it's the last Sunday of the month. But for trainee salesman Kyle, it won't be a day of rest. What do you think of her? It's just pity the radio's a bit uh, old fashioned. It's <laughs> a really big day for me today. Um, I need one more, and I've hit target. So I get taken on to Motor Point full time. It's 4 pm, two hours till closing, and Kyle is hoping Jeff and Linda could be his final sale. But um, I'll open the door for you. You can start it up and stuff if you want, all right? Do you want a cup of tea, or coffee? I'll bring one up for you if you want. No. No? Thank you. They are interested, but will they take it for a spin? Do you want to take you for a drive at all? That's the first car we've just seen, yeah. so I'd like to have a look around. Yep. The bug eyes I don't like really. Don't like the bug eyes. No, no. Um, I've just had some customers come in now. I've showed them this car. They weren't too fast on the lights. They said it looks like a bug. <laughs> One away, so close but so far at, at the same time. Diesel steer on tax. Is it? Yes, yeah, uses more more emissions. Right, that's our plan. We won't be having that one. Is it aubergine? Is what colour do you call one? this? I'm probably the worst person to ask for colour. I'm quite colour blind. I, I, I am. I need to know what it's called. Midnight sky. No, it's not blue. <laughs> I like it. Do you? So I'm going to take you for a spin then, is it? Do you want to test yeah, drive it? Yeah, could do yeah. They're interested in a Ford Fiesta just under £10,000, and this will be Kyle's big chance to impress. There is no driving on the forecourt, so he must bring the car round to collect them. Yeah, I, I really want this deal today. I feel a, a bit of negativity from him. Um, but this, this test drive really could be the making or breaking of it. So pretend I'm not here, and just, just try and enjoy the, the drive, all right? Like the car, yeah? There's not much power in this, but it's only a little engine, you can't spec much, can you? I feel quite safe as well in here, to be honest. <laughs> I've gone on some drives and I've, I've been holding on to my seatbelt. Yeah. I'm a careful driver. Yeah. It's, it's just the wife, is it? She likes yeah. uh, three foot down of her. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll have a chat then with what you want to do. Do you enjoy that? Yes. Like the car, yeah? Yes, I do like the car. So, so what would you like to do? Yes, we'd like to purchase it. Now a high five. Um, I've, because of you two, um, yes. I've, I've, I've hit my target now. And, um, well, can we have a little bit more I've, of the car? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, thank no, you. No, car thank, fault, you. Yeah. Thank Very you so much good. for that, guys. Yeah. Really appreciate That's it. That's OK. Lovely. Oh, okay. Cheerio, guys. Thanks, Thanks very much. Bye-bye.
As the weekend comes to a close, the salesmen are on track to sell over 550 cars this month. That's it then, Sunday night, yeah? All done. Thanks very much. Everybody has worked exceptionally well this weekend. The Valleys have won it again, boys, yeah? When is it going to end? <laughs> eh? So well done to the Valleys. You'll get your prize next week. A big weekend for Carl this weekend. You've done it. Congratulations, bud, yeah? Now a permanent member of the team, so I'm, I'm pretty chuffed to be honest with you. And yeah, part of the crew now I am. The coming month will bring more teasing and more targets, but for now, it's time to celebrate with the boys. Right, let's go. Next time on Bargain Fever Britain, it's Bonkers Black Friday. <laughs> Chaos at Christmas. When guys the turkey, we've not got that. <laughs> Sorry about that. And sales madness sets in. Someone's rock bum in the shoe. What does that say in the other one? Poo. 